Welcome to this second lecture and in this lecture in relation with tense we are going to discuss about the physical principles that govern the tense. How a tense gives analgesia. So there is a very simple theory that is called as the Melzik and Wall, the pain gate theory. This theory was invented by Melzik and Wall in 1978 and then since then it has been supported by various studies. So what is what is a pain gate theory? A pain gate theory is very simple that when the door is closed, the dog cannot enter in the house. Right? Uh, let me let us understand it very simply. Uh, one part of the lecture would be pain physiology that I'll be covering uh, later on. But uh, uh, let me give you a brief discussion about this. See, whenever we are having pain and whenever we go for application of local uh, local uh, chemicals on the skin what do they do what do this local chemicals when you apply any any local uh, chemical any, any ointment or any oil on the skin on the area where you have pain what is the mechanism of action of this area we know that it cannot penetrate the skin for penetration of skin it should have nano uh, particles which can uh, penetrate the skin actually but most of the times what they do is they act as a counter irritant. So the thermal tubes or the cool tubes or the cool sprays or the thermal sprays, hot sprays that we are using on the skin are basically working on the uh, uh, subcutaneous or the cutaneous uh, thermoreceptors and the mechanoreceptors creating a feeling of counter irritation. All right. And this counter irritation thereby leads to inhibition of pain. How? That when, when you are uh, applying any of these counter irritation, it actually stimulates large diameter A, beta and A alpha mechanoreceptor fibers. And these are large diameter fibers, so they have a lower threshold. So whenever you are applying something that is going to cause a irritation on the skin right either it will cause a burning sensation or it can cause uh, some sort of rubbing even this rubbing can uh, stimulate the mechanical mechanoreceptors a beta and a alpha that are present subcutaneously or cutaneously and they have a low threshold so they produce more stimulus and these stimulus travel faster towards the spinal cord when compared to the stimulus of small diameter A delta and C fibers which carry pain. So the small diameter A delta and C carry pain in a slower uh, speed when compared to the A beta and A alpha types. Now let me explain it to you in this way that if uh, uh, there is a traffic signal right in a traffic signal which vehicles uh, uh, will uh, crowd near the signal the two wheelers right any type of bikes or mopeds or any type of scooters or any type of vehicles even cycles the two wheelers are uh, are because they can transit faster so what they will do that while the bigger vehicles are standing in a queue and the larger vehicles the bus and the truck etc are standing at the last right because they move slowly right so the cars are standing in a queue so what will a two wheeler person do and even when you are driving a two-wheeler, you will cross from in between these uh, larger diameter uh, fibers and you will go and stand right in front of the uh, signal where the signal line is there, the marker line is there. And as soon as the signal opens, who go first? These two-wheelers and cycle people that are crowding in the front will go faster. So the same simile is over here that these are the two wheelers in this particular signaling. So what happens is when you are stimulating these things, they go and crowd on the spinal cord, right? And so when they go and crowd on the spinal cord, they are faster received by the spinal cord. So once they, they attach to all the receptors on the first order neuron and they do not allow the sensation from A delta and C fiber, to cross across the spinal cord and to go to the brain and report that there is something. So what does the brain basically feels when you are applying a rubbing action or when you are applying tense which is also equal to this counter irritation method. So the brain here is basically identifying the uh, rubbing 
uh, uh, sensation and not the pain sensation because they are getting inhibited so the door is closed over here right so please come to this uh, picture over here that uh, there is pain it is carried by a delta and c fiber to the spinal cord right now we are applying tense in between when we apply tense in between when we are applying tense in between right so it is disturbing this passage of uh, the pain sensation to the spinal cord it closes the door over here right so it is closing the door over here and what is going forward is the sensation from the tense which are rubbing and tingling so when the rubbing and tingling sensations are going to the brain the brain will stop recognizing the uh, pain sensations and stop creating reactions to pain sensations so thereby it breaks the pain spasm cycle right the pain leads to spasm and spasm leads to pain and all the other chemical reactions that are taking place so it basically inhibits all these reactions because it basically closes the door of the entrance of a delta and c fiber right in the spinal cord so this is the physical uh, 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 you know principle on which basis the tense is working so basically we can see that it is working on the pain gate theory to remember the pain gate theory you can see that when the door is closed the dog cannot enter so if you are saying somewhere where each time you leave the door open even in my house we are living in an apartment but if i leave the door open there are two three cats over here which uh, uh, often break into the house if they see slightest door open right so if the door is closed the cat could not enter inside if the door is open the cat will enter inside the house or similarly if the door is open the dog stray dog will enter inside the house and might bite you but you keep the door closed so it will not bite you so when you keep the door closed with the help of mechanoreceptors which carry uh, impulses at a faster rate when compared to the nociceptors that are the a delta and c fibers so we are stimulating the mechanoreceptors that go in front and block the receptors in the interneuronal pulley in spinal cord and thereby inhibiting the sensation of pain to travel beyond that point so this is the basic counter irritation theory with which or because of which the tense is working so now we have understood that we are continuously stimulating the a beta and a alpha fibers when we are applying tense right so now you will tell me that sir but if we are inhibiting these symptoms is it not going to inhibit because pain is an alarm in the body right pain acts as an alarm for any inflammatory uh, process that is going on in the body right so if you are inhibiting this are we not inhibiting the the uh, the normal processing in the body definitely when the pain sensation is already gone in the brain the whole cascade related to pain has started all the neurotransmitters and all the chemicals that need to be released for inflammatory changes and inflammatory repair are already working but you have to get rid of that sensation that is continuously going to spinal cord and to getting rid for of that sensation we are using this particular pain killing method right by the time that the inflammation completes and the inflammation resolves or remodels enters the remodeling phase the repairing phase and the remodeling phase right till that time you need to inhibit these sensations that are going to the spinal cord so we are using tense okay and uh, as it has been previously also discussed in electrical uh, stimulation also that cathode is the one that actually creates or initiates the movement so cathode is kept proximal so if you want to treat my wrist the proximal electrode right i will place it this is the proximal electrode will be cathode so that it transmits the sensations to the spinal cord if it is kept below then it will be uh, uh, the blocked by the anode placed upper over so you have to understand that whenever you are stimulating with tens the cathode has to be placed above and the anode has to be placed below distally and cathode has to be placed proximally any time you are giving tens you have to remember cathode is placed proximally because you want to give a sensory stimulation and that will go for orthodromic conduction although we are stimulating in a antidromic manner where here the stimulation is given so it stimulates down also and it stimulates up also if the cathode is over here 
when it will travel up the the anode will go antidromically and it will block the cathode right so it will reduce the sensation so if you keep the cathode up this will travel directly to your spinal cord and it will not get blocked with the anode that is kept for completion of circuit so this you have to understand that we are simulating with the use of cathode proximal and anode distal and cathode is always the primary electrode if you are using a, a single electrode for simulation because of any reason in that case also you have to use and the electrode placement should be done on the normal area above the pain sensation point right on the normal area like it should be surrounding the damaged tissue it should not be kept directly on the damaged tissue we'll discuss this in detail when we come into positioning of the electrode right so to summarize this lecture number one tens acts on the principle of pain gate theory pain gate theory means when the door is closed the pain cannot enter the spinal cord so we are closing the door of the spinal cord by stimulating the large diameter fibers that is a beta a beta and a alpha which are low threshold fibers when we when we stimulate them continuously the sensation from this goes and blocks the sensation of a delta and c fiber in the spinal cord thereby stopping the conveyance of pain from the spinal cord and closing the door right and once this door is closed the spinal cord can no more identify the a delta and c fiber related nociceptors or pain sensations so it will deactivate the brain about the pain uh, uh, alarm right and once the pain alarm goes down the descending mechanisms that are controlling from the brain will also subside right thereby leading to pain relief or thereby leading to reduction in the pain right so this was the second uh, lecture that is physical principles now we'll move to the third lecture and understand the types of tense that are used for pain